I am really honored to present this exhibition, Remedios Varo Encuentros. In the intervening decade since the gallery's first exhibition for Varro in 2012, she's grown from being a niche artist known amongst art world insiders and people in Mexico into an internationally acclaimed modern master and growing enthusiasm for her work stems from museum curators, the market, and to the public realm. Remedios passed away unexpectedly at the age of 54. Because of her untimely death and also the fact that she was quite poor for the majority of her adulthood and couldn't afford art supplies, her output is relatively small. In fact, we think she only made 400 works of art in total, of which only 120 are oil paintings. So miraculously, my gallery has managed to unite 11 of her most iconic paintings and works on paper here in San Francisco. The theme of this exhibition is the encuentro or the encounter. Every single work in the exhibition has something to encounter, whether it's two beings and a chance encounter, encounter with the supernatural, with the cosmos, with the afterlife, and even with the unexpected. The exhibition Remedios Varo Encuentros takes its name from a painting titled Encuentro from 1959. In this work, the encounter taking place is between a woman and herself. Clothed in a watery blue dress, she cautiously opens a box on the table in front of her to find her own face staring back at her. She seems unfazed by this uncanny experience. The many unopened boxes lining the shelves in the background leave the viewer to wonder what other revelations may await the woman. The woman in the painting can be interpreted as a sort of surrogate figure for Varro herself. She painted herself into many of her paintings, including a number of the works on view in the exhibition. They cannot be understood as traditional likenesses, but rather more like self-portrait characters. These self-portrait characters are often androgynous and bear similar attributes to the artist. Almond-shaped eyes, a heart-shaped face and pointy chin, and sometimes with Varro's own striking red hair. A Varro-like figure is the protagonist of another work on view in the exhibition, Ruptura, from 1955. In this painting, a mysterious cloaked figure descends a staircase, walking away from a building in which six identical faces peer down at her. With her eyes cast upward, she appears aware that she's being watched, but nonetheless continues confidently on her path, not breaking her stride. Ruptura is an excellent example of the level of detail Varro put into every element of her paintings. Her mature style was virtuosic and painstaking, resulting in paintings in which even the most minute detail is executed with precise and delicate brushstrokes. From the crumpled white papers flying out of the front door, to the mossy vegetation and blades of grass covering the walls, to the curvature of the snail's shells, to the delicate hand clutching the folds of her cloak. In Ruptura, Varro offers the viewer a tantalizing and unresolved narrative. What is the relationship between the central woman and the ghostly faces watching her? From what or whom is she fleeing? Varro's body of work is replete with paintings filled with dramatic tension and enigmatic characters. For example, in Banqueros en Acción, or Bankers in Action, from 1962, we see a desolate streetscape through which a band of four men wearing black frock coats and top hats effortlessly fly. They appear to be in search of the woman crouched behind the wall, just out of sight. Why are they pursuing this woman? And how exactly are they managing to fly? As usual, Varro offers her viewers more questions than answers, like clues to an unsolved mystery. The impossibility of the banker's act of flight is suspended within the composition, as is so often the case in paintings by Varro, in which boats are powered by fantastical hydraulics, 
and young boys are accompanied down the street by gigantic black butterflies. In Varro's pictorial world, the improbable is made plausible and the natural laws of the universe are upended. She delights in confronting her viewers with the unexpected and the uncanny. Alongside the many extraordinary paintings, also on view in the exhibition are a handful of exquisite works on paper. One such work, La Torre, is the earliest work by Varro in the exhibition, executed in 1947. It is part of a body of work that Varro created in the years following her arrival in Mexico City, after she was forced to flee Europe due to World War II. As an emigre in a new land, coming to terms with the fact that her exile would be a permanent one, La Torre captures some of the loss and longing associated with this moment in the artist's life. The central red-headed figure, perhaps a self-portrait of Varro, looks away from the viewer from her perch in a crumbling tower, overgrown with vegetation. The other two female figures appear to be on a journey of sorts, traveling to some unknown destination. Similar to this moment in Varro's biography, the figures are looking back while moving forward, suspended between the ruins of the past and the possibilities of the present. When she painted this work, Varro had no idea that she would spend the remainder of her life in Mexico City, where she would develop her unique and iconic style and receive widespread acclaim for her incomparable vision and technique. The final painting completed by Varro is on view in the exhibition, Naturaleza Muerta Resucitando, from 1963, is a magnum opus. It is remarkable for its size and for the fact that the composition is devoid of Varro's trademark figures. Instead, the central form in the painting is a lit candle around which eight empty plates levitate and a handful of fruits orbit and collide, leaving trails of cosmic dust in their wake. Anthropomorphic mosquitoes buzz around the chapel-like room. This is Varro's one and only still life painting, and it references the memento mori tradition of still life, which were popular in 17th century Europe as reminders that life is fleeting and to prepare for the afterlife. Given that it was Varro's final painting, the theme feels eerily prophetic and poignant. In her last work, she left her viewers a kernel of hopefulness and a message about the interconnectedness of life and death. From the fallen seeds that are scattered across the floor of the painting, new plants emerge and grow. In the world of Remedios Varro, all encounters, even those with the afterlife, yield new possibilities.